Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Elementor Pro to create these custom icon tooltips. I wanted to make this video to see if I can use the Elementor Hotspot widget to make these icon tooltips. I've tried several other plugins to pull this off, but I couldn't find any good solutions. I just wanted to use the power of Elementor Pro to pull this off without touching any code. You could pull this off with just HTML and CSS, but in this case, I wanted to just use Elementor Pro. Here's an example of what we're gonna pull off in this tutorial. When a user hovers over this question mark, it's gonna pop up with some text right here. If you head over to the Elementor website, they have a whole page dedicated to just the hotspot widget. So if you haven't used this uh, widget before, it's a really cool tool, but I wanted to use it in a very unique way. So they have a lot of good documentation and videos, but essentially the way it works is, you upload a large image like this, and within this one widget, you can have multiple hotspots where the user can click or hover, and it will you know, highlight a certain thing. So in this case, the user would click or hover this and say like drapes. So I wanted to use it where I had one icon and a blank background. They don't have that feature natively built in, so I had to find a creative way to do it. So that's exactly what we're going to cover in this tutorial. So let's just jump right into it. The first step we need to actually do is create a transparent background that's really small that would sit behind the icon. So in this case, I'm gonna just open up Photoshop and show you how I created a transparent background. So you just click File, New, and once this pops up, I just went ahead and used the width of 20 pixels wide, 20 pixels high. Just click Create, and what I did next is to this little lock icon, I just removed this background. So when you remove that lock, you can now click it where you see the checkerboard here. That means you have a transparent image. So I just went up to here, hit save as, PNG, and then I just saved it as blank image 20 by 20 PNG. So that's it. So you needed to do this step to make sure that the icon has something to sit on top of. So we're gonna get out of Photoshop now. So here we are in the back end of the Elementor website. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you step-by-step step on how I was able to create this. So what you need to do first is bring in the hotspot widget. So you just type in hotspot, just click and drag it right here. So in this case, I'm just gonna throw it right below it. The first step we need to do is this image right here is that background we just created in Photoshop. So you need to click here. In this case, I already uploaded it. So it's right here, blank image 2020 uh, PNG. And you can see it's only two kilobytes. So I just hit insert and now you're going to see that this widget has shrunk down to 20 pixels and you can't see anything. That's exactly what we wanted to pull off. And under image size is what I recommend. Just go here, click on full. That would just show the full image. You're not going to do any stretching or anything like that. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and assign the icon. And so what you do is you go under hotspot and by default they have item number one, which doesn't have anything on it yet. So what we can do is just ignore these two things right here, the label and the link. And under icon, what I recommend normally is upload an SVG because you can click right here where it says icon library. And this is going to pull up the font awesome icons. So we could just type in the word like question mark and you can see it's right here. So we could just hit insert and we already have that in there. The reason why I recommend you download the font awesome icons is because it loads up less CSS and bloat on the back end. So if you're not familiar, you can actually just go to the Fawn Awesome website. And in this case, I just wanted the question mark. You just type in the word question mark up here, or in this case, it's called question circle. And you see this icon right here. You could just download this SVG. So instead of having to load up the whole library, you could just load up that one file. So that's usually what I recommend. So let me go back into here and you can click where it says upload. And you can see I already have this one right here. It was just called question circle solid dot SVG. Now we can go ahead and start messing around with the functionality of this widget and then do some styling. So let's just close this down for now. And if you look under tooltip, by default, the trigger is on click. In most cases, I'm going to say you probably want this at hover because the user is going to know that they can just hover over it and something will pop up. So here in this example, you can see that some text is coming through. And so what that text is actually coming from is under hotspot and by default they have this text right here. And the reason why you can't really see it is because it's white. But let's go ahead and say we want it like this where it has a blue background with white text. To change the background to the blue you would go under here under box 
And under color right here, this is the background color. So in this case, I have some primary colors saved. So you can see right here, it's already working pretty good. So when you hover over it, we got white text and a blue background. And of course, you can always change the width of the box here. But what I recommend is usually just keeping it at nothing because what it's going to do is it's going to stretch just the length of the text right here. So you could have it where you could stretch it, but I think in most cases you don't want that because you could run into some issues where it starts to go off the page. So let's just keep it very simple for this tutorial. And if you want to add a simple box shadow, that's right under here. So you can just add a little bit of box shadow, maybe like five. And so now you can see it's got a little bit of that black halo around the outside. That's your little drop shadow. So you can go ahead and play with the blur, the spread. Let's just keep it very simple. If you remember this background image right here is at 20 pixels. So let's go ahead and make sure that everything's at least 20 pixels. So if you go under style image, if you just go under pixels, type in 20, you're gonna make sure that it's at 20. And the hotspot right here, same thing, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's pixels and 20. So you wanna make sure that it's all within this blue boundary right here, cause you could go here and make it really large but it's gonna mess up everything. So you gotta keep it consistent. So 20 and 20. I recommend not going any smaller than 20 pixels cause you might start to run into some accessibility issues with um, the tap targets. So this is something that you wanna keep an eye on. If you do start to get errors where it's saying that the icons are too small or anything along those lines in Google tools, you can go ahead and increase the size right here. So in some cases you may need to go to like a 30 pixels. So it depends on your layout and how everything else is laid out on the page, but start with 20 and this is a nice small icon right here like this. The good thing is when you upload an SVG image, you can change um, the color all within CSS. And to do that, you see right under here where it says hotspot under color. Right now it's just pulling in whatever default color it is when you download it. So in this case, it was a, uh, a black color. I know it looks green here, but when you download it, it's just a black icon. And what's nice is you could just go here and click whatever color you want. So in this case, I wanted the blue. So you can change this to, you know, whatever color you have right here that will fit your website. But I already have some global colors right here. Let's click primary. So when you hover over, it goes below. Perfect. And if you need to change the position of where your tooltip is, you do that right here under content and tooltip or you see right here position so on desktop they give you the option you can do left top right and bottom so you can see right here this is fully responsive so on desktop let's have it go to the right cool so now it's on the right side right here and let's scroll down to mobile and here we are on mobile let's make this to the bottom we're going to fix this alignment because we're going to push it up here so on mobile, I want to have it below, but on desktop, it's going to go to the right. Let's just click update. Let's view the front end of the website. Make sure everything is loading up correctly. So we got that to the right. And on mobile, you can always just scale down the screen right here. Just make sure that everything is working right here. So here we are on mobile and you can see right here it's being cut off. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how I was able to inline this correctly. So now I'm going to show you how to use the Elementor's inline positioning to make this icon appear next to some text. So this is a really good use case where you want to use inline styling instead of using intersections or anything along those lines. This is going to keep your code a little bit cleaner and actually make it easier to edit in the future. So like I said, let's have the icon appear next to this right here. It says 4980 investment. So what you need to do is select these two items and make them inline. So let's go ahead and select that and under the text editor, I went under advanced, and you see under positioning, width, just need to go down to inline, and that's it. So what that's gonna do is it shrinks down, you can see that blue box is no longer going to the edge. So what this is doing is it's figuring out how wide this widget needs to be, and it's just making it that wide, so it doesn't stretch all the way across the page. And then we can just do the same thing here, and it will bump it up right here. So let me show you exactly how to do that. You just click on your hotspot widget, advanced, positioning, width, and line. And that's it. That's all you have to do. And you can see right here that it bumps it up right next to it. So in this case, let's add some padding or some margin to the whole hotspot. So to do that, you'll go under advanced and under, let's say, margin. Let's just unlink everything right here on the left. Let's make it 20 pixels. That 20 is too big. Let's make it like... Eight. 
So if you just go here, type in eight, that seems okay right now. Let's so make sure you go up into the front end of the website, make sure everything looks good and let's hit refresh and you can see right there. Now let's shrink down the page and make sure that this inline is working correctly. Yep, and there you go. And if you come across a situation like this where, I don't know if you can see right here, but the icon is a little offset compared to the text right here. What you can do is go into your column settings right here and under vertical align, let's just change that to middle and then keep your eye on the icon. You're gonna see it shifts down a little bit. See that right there? So what it's doing is it's finding the center of this widget and the center of this widget and just aligning it in the middle. So in a lot of cases, you're going to just need to toggle this on. Once you start to do these inline styles, you may need to go ahead and change that right there. And of course, if you come back to the hotspot area under item one, I do recommend keeping your tooltip text very short. I wouldn't recommend adding images or custom code or anything along those lines because you're just going to start to run into some layout issues. Just keep it really short and sweet. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new Elementor tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.